Good evening everybody and welcome to tonight's uh, live stream. We've got the great pleasure of um, having Rob Angus and Danny Leon, so CEO and uh, commercial manager respectively. And um, Vic obviously will be doing the uh, hosting. So hope you're all well and uh, just a bit of a ups and down weekend. Brilliant Saturday and everybody who went up to Oldham enjoyed themselves and didn't get stuck in lots of traffic. Uh, going up and didn't miss any of the game and then the disappointment of yesterday with the postponement of the letter of the women's game um with that torrential weather over the week over the um saturday night and into sunday such a disappointment for the uh for the team and everybody else much anticipated we had rianne on last week and she was sort of saying how excited the the team were for playing at the county ground so it's a bit of a disappointment but hopefully they'll be able to rearrange it. So let's get Vic on. Good evening, Vic. Very good evening to you, Chris. How are we this evening? Are you okay? How are you? Yeah, you good. Okay? Thank you very much. Yes, good. yes. Yes, I believe you were uh, doing the on the mic on Sunday. Yeah, uh, I was going to be evening. making my uh, debut on the pitch announcing thing on Sunday. I think that's partly the reason they cancelled it, to be honest. <laughs> I'm uh, sure so. <laughs> so no, very disappointing, and I know the extra yeah. uh, team were very disappointed about it as well. But uh, you know, travelling back to Devon yesterday, seeing the tr the traffic jam in the opposite direction, yeah. um, you know, would have saved yeah. them a lot of time anyway. So uh, yeah, anyway, hopefully they can play it again. Traffic. End of mm. half turn traffic. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So. Right. So let's get started. We will first bring on Mr. Angus. Good evening, Rob. Good evening, Chris. Good evening, Vic. Good, Good evening, Rob. You. You okay? Yeah, good. Thank you very much. Did it work? Did it work? We see. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got Danny. Hi, Danny. Hi, guys. Hi, Chris. Hi, Vic. Hi, Rob. Hi Danny. Hi. Hi, Dan. Right. I will leave you to it. As always, if there's any questions, please leave them in the comments. We'll get through as many as we can. Um, and as last time when we had Rob um, on, we will collate them and send any that we don't answer to them to um to see what would what the questions were okay so i will see you later chris thanks very much indeed and a very uh, warm welcome to rob this of course is not your first dance on this uh, monday evening panel so welcome danny your debut we're very grateful to have you along thank you very much indeed for being there thanks for the invite um let, let's just uh, i think it, it'd be worth just sort of differentiating between your your two roles rob your ceo so are you over top of everything is that your role is that how it works yeah over the top of everything um very much obviously off off the pitch sort of side you know the football side's very much down to the to the two bends uh, of the when it comes down to budgets and stuff like that so i'm sort of running the shop for clem if you like but obviously i'm in contact and dis uh, discussing things with clem um at least twice a day in the, in the morning to around about midday and then and then in the evening when he gets up from the other side of the world um, and obviously we've got um, Zavu supports us as well in between time, you know, uh, as, as well. So, um, but yeah, my, my job is to sort of oversee and make sure the club is running running smoothly. You mean Clem Morfuni actually sleeps? Is that, it, I thought it was a rumour, but it's true, is it? Yeah, four or five hours in, in our afternoon, but that's about it, Dan. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he does sleep much, to be fair. So the commercial, head of commercial, Dan, what, what, what does that mean? Uh, well, a wide variety of things, but yeah, majority obviously just everything from yeah all advertising, sponsorship streams, uh, match day executive hospitality, um, and basically everything that involves bringing money into the to the football club. So, um, other than ticket revenue, um, so but yeah, have an overview on all all areas. So it's um, yeah quite varied, but yeah, good. Um, let's just talk about those few days because you were there, I think, in the. Um, how can we put this no man's land between one and the other how difficult was that for you because obviously nobody was going to put any money in the football club during those few days were they yeah obviously well it was a bit further long ago obviously I think obviously the trusts were quite heavily involved in the the boycott and everything which has obviously made my job very difficult at the time but uh but that was you know needed to be done at the time so yeah I was sort of from February onwards, then obviously then there was the court case, everything up in the air and things. And I spent every meeting I was in, it probably spent 20 minutes just talking about things I knew nothing about. And I was only ever seeing things in the news. So it was quite difficult. But um, but yeah, and, and then obviously then the interim period, it was 
tricky because obviously we weren't being paid. You know, the CEO left, previous CEO left, um, and left myself, Matt, Mildy, probably only four or five of us really of seniority that were left with like, <laughs> well, what do we do? We've got, we can't pay anything. We've got five senior players. We've got pre-season in three weeks. We're not getting paid thinking, what, what's going on? But, um, but yeah, it was difficult, but we all made the decision. We all sat down around, around the table and said, look, we're all within our rights to go home and leave, but none of us did. And we all said, right, well, we're, we're going to stick it out and we care about the club and, and it's only going to benefit us because ultimately the takeover is probably going to happen at some point or another, but if we can get ourselves in the best shape possible um, to hit the ground running when they do finally get in, then then it'll be only benefit to ourselves. So, yeah, we all... Um, Stuck in, you know, over at Super Marine, I was doing the media when, when I saw Clem walk, walk past and, um, yeah, and then obviously then there's been a big change now. So, but Yeah, was definitely... there ever a moment when you just thought, mm, no, I've got to look after myself or were you always fully committed to staying? Obviously, you were thinking about it. You know, I'm quite in a lucky position where I don't necessarily live month to month. So I sort of had a little bit of leeway a little bit but there was a lot of people at the club that were really struggling and we all we all got together to help each other out um luckily family members have obviously helped people out with wages and things which was helpful but yeah you it was getting to a point i think if it had stayed much longer than than it was you know two or three weeks longer i think probably you know we would have had to you know look at other jobs and uh, i know will the media manager left um and uh it was great which is sad to see him go but um but yeah, we yeah we all we could have left definitely yeah definitely crossed my mind and definitely looked at a few you see a few things online but um but yeah I'm glad we uh, you know the main thing is we we all said look it's it's going to get better uh, and um I think we regret it if we never you know if six months down the line we're in this position we're in now where we're doing pretty well on the pitch the future's looking bright in terms of everything moving forward with the club it's an exciting time to be involved. Um, and I wouldn't want to be have left and then thought, oh god, yeah, I went through all that time of being through the tough times, and now it's getting better, and someone else is in the seat. So, um, so yeah, we're we're all pretty glad, I think, that we did stick it out differently. Well, I got comments here which says uh, this is from Matt. Uh, Thank you, Danny. I hope the faith has been rewarded in spades. From Darren. Um, Oh, hang on a minute. No, that, that's another one. This is from Darren. Uh, Danny and the team did some brilliant work over the period of uncertainty. Great work. Thank you. Uh, so I, I think it's um, very much appreciated, the work that was done in that time. And I, I would imagine you're seeing an improvement in revenue streams coming into the club, both of you now, aren't you? I mean, sponsors are coming on board. People are getting involved with the football club. Whereas <laughs> in the period previously, I think it's fair to say, people were leaving what was yeah. a sinking ship at the time. Yeah, it's definitely an easier sell at the moment because obviously, you know, there's um, there's a good time to be involved, right? You know, the football's better, the atmosphere around the town is better, the cold club is better. We're getting really good social media, you know, presence across our our, our channels. I mean, last month we only we had thirty seven million people look across our socials, you know, which is which is on par with Championship clubs and even almost similar to some Premier lower league lower level Premier League clubs. So. The exposure we're getting is great and we're getting a lot of yeah all the existing sponsors you know that that had um that had previously come out and 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 said they weren't renewing you know people like imagine cruising nsbrc people like that um and and verilogic um with kev metcalf and um and the first aim for me was get every one of them back on board which we have and, and which is great and then we've had some people that have been in board not been done anything in the whole time that Lee was involved and they said they wouldn't ever do anything under the previous regime and they've they've come back and, and haven't done anything for 10 years. I've seen people in hospitality said I've not I've not been here for 10 years and now we're back, which is great. And but then also lots of national exposure and new businesses which we've got on board. So it's been a wide range of stuff. And obviously that's great for the club because all money that comes into the club and I think Rob stressed it before and I can't stress enough that all money that comes into the club stays within the club. So all money that comes in goes to support first team, academy, infrastructure in the stadium, retail side, everything that goes in and, and that's all going to go into the right places. So all the money that comes in is, is goes into the right areas, which is, which is massively important for the club to move forward. 
Yeah, it certainly is. There are lots of questions coming in, uh, Rob, as you would imagine, about various things. I don't know if you can answer this, but this is from Derek Hand. Is there still money uh, uh, from the Nigel Eady Trust Fund for future products now projects? Uh, Nigel Eady, of course, a long-standing fan. Many people knew him for the incredibly long scarf that he used to wear to football matches. And uh, I don't know what you know about that. Um, do you know anything about that? Yeah, well, look, the... the um... Um, Nigel Eady uh, Fund has obviously um, been there for a period of time. I think the, the trustees, um, you know, are, are great people and have wisely been very careful about where that money went, um, and obviously um, made sure it didn't it didn't go to the previous regime, which I think is very sensible given given how that sort of played out. Uh, there are positive discussions at the Eady Trust with uh, another supporters trust and the club, and and, and the discussions underway at the moment. Um, but but positive discussions, and we'll see how and when you know Nigel's legacy can be appropriately used to invest in the long term infrastructure of the of the football club. Yeah, that's good to know because I think many people, as I said, will know Nigel Eady for that incredible scarf. I mean, it went everywhere, didn't it? Um, quite literally, uh, sometimes. Um, this is from Pete. Are there plans in place to upgrade the Legends Lounge? Um, is that your domain, Danny? Uh, it's a bit of both, yeah. We've had, we've actually got, I think, um, we've got some meetings in a couple of weeks, I think, in terms of some opportunities for, for things. And yeah, 100%, like we want to do all of the areas in the stadium, right? There's no been no real, real major work done to the stadium for many years. So that's, that's definitely something that is a big part of the plan. Obviously, right now, you know, the key thing is to stabilize the club and, 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 and sort the inherited debts and, and everything first. But, you know, like I said, and again, I said earlier, all the money that comes in goes into the right places. So, you know, that's down to myself uh, and speak to, to Rob and Clem and say, look, you know, we've done X amount of profit this year or whatever. Let's, we need to do this in the Legends Lounge because there's a bit of work. And obviously now that we have the conferencing events side back in house as well for all the money that comes in for that. So it's in our best interest to try and maximise that and improve our, not necessarily our match day offering, but also our non-match day offering where we can have parties, conferences, events. So um yeah that, there's definitely plans in place and it's something that we we really tr want to try and do and make that a real um hub of activity on a match day definitely um this is from boomtown on twitter can you thank them for making the ladies toilet safer in the town end after i raised concerns my daughters now feel confident going to them at half time now obviously i'm i'm not aware of what you've done to the ladies toilets in the town end um but can you let us know what you might have done to improve them yeah, sure. Look, we had some feedback that the um, the signage wasn't that clear, that it was ladies' toilets, and there's a bit of a concern that there were there could be um, uh, people sort of ve veering in. So we've uh, made it clear they are ladies' toilets, and we've put a uh, a screen up, if you like, so that people couldn't can't veer in uh, without actually sort of going in. Um, so look, again, we get some feedback like that, which we can act upon and, and do. Then we'll, we're we're keen to do it and to, and to make improvements. As Danny said, it's about stabilising, so we can't do everything at once, and we're still carefully managing the finances back to where they were. But where we can make improvements, then we'll that we're looking to do that. And they, they're also being upgraded a bit as well because we we found that some of the areas in there um, weren't that sort of stable. So new sinks and stuff like that are going in a, 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 as well. So. Um, Hopefully they'll see, they'll see some more improvements in, in that area uh, for the next game. Well, that's good news. On that subject, Fiona sent a message in about hand sanitizers in the Arkle stand toilets. Um, we mentioned this before. Uh, what, what is the situation? Because at many clubs, there is hand sanitizer readily available mm. around the ground. Why, why hasn't it happened in Swindon? I, th I think it's just, just a matter of we've not uh, had a chance to sort of get to it yet, Vic. It's definitely something we can look at and look at putting in. Um, we'll, we'll try and make those uh, those improvements and get them in. Sometimes it's just literally the, the amount of stuff that we need to do. Obviously, recognising that, I think, as I said before, you know, whilst we didn't have a pre-season on the pitch, we didn't have that off the pitch, as, as, as Danny's just covered. Danny and, and Matt and a number of others have fun, uh, Fred and uh, Noel, uh, Jordan, a number of us did a fantastic job in the summer while not getting paid. But obviously, no bills are being paid and there wasn't that ability to sort of get everything ready for the season. Everything was cut short, so we are still very much in 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 catch up. Um, but it's definitely something that we can we can we can look at look at doing. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, at the moment we have got Newport home next Tuesday, haven't we? I mean, would you expect it to be in place by then, or the 
Crawley game possibly. We'll, we'll definitely be able to get some uh, product in because we've got lots of sanitizer available. It's just the the dispensers really, which, uh, okay. which like, we can look at them. But obviously, um, yeah, we we can definitely put lots of uh, hand sanitizing pots with the just the easy Push ones down. all around. Yeah, on, on the especially the articles, it's quite easy because you've got the uh, the level, you know, by the uh, you know, the ledge that people would put their drinks on and stuff. So we can put some all along there, which and on the kiosk bits as well. So. That, that you know next tuesday the arcos will be open anyway so you'll see that on tuesday definitely okay that that's good to know thank you very much now this is from anthony what are rob's thoughts on giving interviews to the swindon advertiser where the article is only available to those that pay a premium shouldn't these uh, his interviews be available to all fans now this came up um a week or so ago um regarding the paywall now the with the i still call it the evening advertiser um but you have to subscribe to get the articles don't you and and as you'll be aware rob you uh, you might get the first couple of lines of your article in it but you don't get the whole thing so what are your views i mean you've got no you know you don't have any sway over the newspaper business i understand that but what's your view oh look, look um, you know, i mean it's it's the average call uh what I would say, you know, I don't think I don't think you miss anything because I think I communicate pretty well through these forums on the website, uh, in the program. You know, I don't think there's anything exclusive that you're missing. I understand why the ad for do it. Obviously, the, the the readership is is dwindling as everything goes digital, and they're trying to monetize their offering. And I guess it, they might be. I, I don't. I can't speak for them, but I imagine if they don't try and monetize it, then we may not have a local paper, which I think would be a detriment to the uh, to the whole. Uh, town of swindon and and surrounding areas that it serves so i think it's a call that they need they need to make um if it's something that, that helps them generate revenue it means that we still have an advert and we don't have you know and rather than not have one then i think you know i would support them on that what i would say is you know i talk a lot um and quote a lot bit in the program on the website these type of uh, forums um so and i think you know there's massive exclusive content that people are are missing out on. What I would say though, it'd be great for everyone to support the advert because I do think it would be a big miss if we didn't have a, you know, a local daily paper. Yeah, I, they've had terrible problems. I know with circulation and things like that, and of course staffing, which is another another thing. But but would your material say that? So would that article be reprinted on the website, on the town website? After well, it's appeared in the advertiser, is that we, we 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 can look at doing something similar on that basis. Uh, obviously, the advert gives us greater reach because those that buy it is it's the printed media, if you like that that you know, and it's great to get the message out more broadly than than just what I can put on the website. And those that you know may not access a website or or other forums can read it in the paper. I think that's that helps the club from that perspective. But as I said, you know, we're very happy that we we put something you know similar out there. As I say, I don't think there's anything absolutely. Um, earth shattering that, that that people are missing if they decide not to um not to sort of um pay on the uh on the paywall but i, I see where the ever are coming and you know and i'd encourage people to support the advert because i've you know as a as a, you know someone who's grown up in swindon so, since i was four years old i think the advert is a great thing for the town and it would be poorer without it yeah uh, and i yeah, go back to the days of the football pink when i used to cycle miles to try and get a copy of the football pink on a saturday night it's one of those things isn't it um right uh I, I, i've got a question here regarding youtube um danny i don't know if you uh, are in a place to, to talk about this uh, this is from sean is there any reason why there is hardly any sdfc uploads on youtube appears to be plenty of opposition manager interviews etc on there um What's your yeah, I think um, from that point of view, obviously, um, it's more necessarily with, uh, well, obviously, Andrew, our media manager, is a, a team of one. Um, and it's it's difficult at the moment. Again, Andrew's only been in the role the last, what, five weeks, six weeks? Well, maybe a bit longer than that, maybe since since the since he came in. Um it was a bit of a time when it was obviously not being done by anyone that was skilled. Uh, but uh, but Andrew's obviously now he's got the uncut guys back and uh, we've had um, Matt, I believe, who's been doing a lot of work uh, behind the scenes on the footage stuff that's been out that sort of side of it. Um, and yeah, he, he's driven a lot of the stuff through the iFollow, which obviously, again, there's an area for, from our point of view that's you can monetize that from from areas but we're looking at some new options um 
just had a really good positive meeting today about some potential offerings with around content, which allows some exclusive content for fans to get hold of. And again, that'll be put out through YouTube and all other channels. Um, agree, we, we you know we want to be engaged as much as possible, and these channels are fantastic. So that's something you want to look at. But ultimately, it is just Andrew and the media team at the moment, and there's a lot of other bits that he needs to do as well. So. Um, I think it's more just a, a time element at the moment, but now he's getting his foot under the door and, and into the rhythm of things and, and, a, and a bit more um, getting into it, then yeah, 100%, that's something we want to push out. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll continue to put more out through all the socials as well. Okay, and just a reminder that this will be on the um, Official Supporters Club uh, YouTube channel uh, within a few hours afterwards. Set yourself up well there, Vic. Well, you? I thought, uh, nice plugs. I thought that was on the back of what you just said, Danny. So thank you very much. It wasn't me who wrote that question in, by the way, <laughs> under another name. Uh, this from Alan. Um, oh, yes, I've got another one coming in on a very hot topic, uh, which we'll get to in a moment. Uh, but this one from Alan. Um, is it looking likely that the Crawley game will be off as McCurdy will be suspended, or won't he, and uh, with the other five on duty. Now, let's clear up the international ones, first of all. Johnny Williams has been selected for Wales today. Jojo Wallacott has been... Has he been called up by Ghana? I think you were saying earlier, Rob, that there's two that have been called up so far. Yeah, well, we're expecting... I don't think he's officially been called up, but we would expect that, that Jojo and Anthony Grant will get called up because they played, didn't they, I think, in, in their last internationals for... Ghana and Jamaica, respectively. Um, I think the, you know, Alex Gilbert and um, Kane Kester Hayden, uh, we're waiting, I think, for confirmation in the the squads for Ireland under 21s and um, England under 20s. Um, so we're just waiting on those, really. And then it's very much down for a call that, that um, for Ben Garner to make. Um, we've got, you know, there's a deadline in terms of the call that, that we need to make. Um, um, ahead of the, the Crawley game, um, I, I'm sure the Bens will sort of weigh things up and, and then and then make the call, and then we'll you know adjust uh, adjust accordingly. It's a difficult sort of balance we've got, as we saw against Forest Green. We've got, um, albeit you know the squad's not huge, but it is a strong squad that we've got there, and and the team did a great job, you know, missing those five you know internationals. Who, it's fantastic they've been called up, but obviously responded with a with a great win at Forest Green. So. Um, it's it's a balance that that, that ultimately Ben Garner will make the make the call on. Uh, just give us an indication, Danny. Uh, say it is called off. I mean, we're in a spell where the town are away Saturday, they're away next Saturday. Oh, all right, they've got the Newport game next Tuesday, but that's not going to be your regular nine thousand, is it? That we're getting in the minute. And so, if you call off a Saturday game, does that limit your commercial activities? Say, if it's then played later in the season on Tuesday, do you get as much income in or not as much? Um, obviously we, um, yeah, the ticket side of it, obviously Tuesday nights are never as popular. Um, so you'd probably be looking at, you know, seven, 7,000 maybe for a Tuesday night now, which would still be really great. But considering we're normally at nine, nine and a half now, obviously there'd be, Crawley wouldn't really bring, bring many away fans, but again, they would bring even less, mm. um, on Tuesday, the hospitality offering, um, you probably have a lot of people wanting to rebook probably for another game, not necessarily the crawler game. So you wouldn't, obviously a Tuesday night, people work, um, you, you don't get as long. And, and obviously the big corporate ones, they don't want to do something necessarily on a Tuesday night. So um, it does definitely impact the the, uh, the, um, the commercial element a little bit. Um, yeah, but obviously like, like Rob said, it's a football decision really. So, you know, that's not, that doesn't come into it really. It's something we've got to live with and deal with. Um, and also we've got to do what what's best for the team so but like like rob said um forest green they were great and they did really well so um and i'm sure they'd rather maybe even play it get it done and you know and then and then rather than a build up because you never know when you get into december and january you know yeah. it's like some of these pitches they they do get a bit um struggling our pitch is normally fine but again if they all start build up you might have four or five games behind suddenly so um yeah but again that's a football decision to be made yeah you only need not polar vortex and then you're in trouble aren't you really uh yeah. this is this is from josh is there an intended date or season to be completely debt free and has there been much sponsorship and investment interest from australia now there were one or two supporters groups springing up uh, the other side of the world aren't there has that transferred itself into money and what about that debt free uh, scenario who wants to take that one 
Oh, I'll, take that one. Yeah, I'll take that one. So look, we're working <laughs> through the debt. Well, obviously, you know, we're still sort of working it through, but the inherited debt's well over uh four million, um, if you like, that, that we we've come into. Um, and that's down now to uh around about one point one point seven. So we've you know, in in the time that we've been we've been in, that's some some really good um really really good works so it's about um 2.7 i should say so we've knocked off a good a good amount uh of, of the debt um obviously the the efl loan that 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 is an interest-free loan and it's repayable over four years but obviously comes to some restrictions this season which we just need to sort of balance out we have repayment plans pretty much going on the majority of the debt so hmrc the the council obviously the the efl um the bank as well in terms of bounce back loans um and there are still some outstanding contractual disputes that we're uh, w that we're working through with support from um you know our, our very strong legal team in um eddie paralapino from um, hanover bond law um so um it's being managed well and it's it's managed sort of down um in terms of a time scale wouldn't be completely free of debt i think that'd probably be too difficult to do at the moment but it's heading in the right right direction um and we're continuing to manage it sort of well and getting gates of over nine thousand probably would help as well, wouldn't it? Well, yeah, with all the, the spin-offs yeah. associated with that. Yeah, the, the revenue from that, the great work that Danny's done uh, in in bringing you know uh, sponsors in and existing sponsors renewing, really really helps. Um, as well as you know the retail and the and the, the kit setting out really really well, and the hospitality and catering offering that we have both on match day but on non match day that's massively important because as Danny said earlier, every single uh, bit of money that we generate you know will goes into investing in this club improving the financial position it doesn't go out of the club so that's a massive difference so you know if you support us through your, your parties and your conferences to your, your what you can buy in the shop to you know coming on to match day it all massively helps the, helps the club yeah now uh danny that brings me nicely on to this question this is from darren it's regarding shirts and poppies on shirts for the next two weeks i'm guessing that the actual um remembrance game would be the crawley game but the point i was going to get to next you, you know i'm wearing one of these poppy badges and of course there are some that involved in football clubs they have the football club badge on um and they're normally available in club shops now where are we at i'll ask you about the shirts in a minute rob because you'll there you go that's the very very badge i'm talking about um is that available <laughs> is that available in the club shop uh, and what about the club shop? Where are we at with that? Um, well, Rob, is that you got that one there? Yeah, they, yeah. they got delivered today, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, so they're tomorrow. in the club shop now, they will be tomorrow, I believe. I believe, yeah, right. Okay, well, that's good to know. Um, club shop isn't exactly my area necessarily. I mean, I have an overview of it of the commercial element, but not the obviously Jordan's recently just left as well, which you've obviously seen on the um. Uh, on the club website so yeah we are in a little bit of interim period at the moment but um but yeah the, the, i believe the poppies will be available in the shop yes okay. from normal okay. hours okay and i was going to because when you were you were advertising for a retail manager last week i think weren't you has that position been filled yet or are you still interviewing no we're just shortlisting at the moment um and then we'll take a decision you know we've got really strong team already we've got um vicky who's helping us cover in the interim uh, and stuff like that and um and then we'll uh, we'll assess as uh, the applicant shortlist and you know and then try and make the right decision um going forwards because obviously that is a big source of income on a saturday especially when you've got a crowd of nine and a half thousand a lot of kids there what do they want to do they want to go and buy i don't know a bobble hat or something they want to buy yeah. something it's a massive source of income isn't it yeah, yeah it's a huge yeah. oh sorry Robin. yeah yeah it can be and online as well um and and we you know we've been down Recently, when we visited uh, Plymouth in the EFL Trophy, um, and we, we looked at their offering and what they've got and what we can learn, because they've been probably two years on our journey in terms of new and, and, and decent sort of ownership. So there's real opportunities there, I think, for us to, to leverage the, the resource. So along with, as I say, all the, all, all the other elements, we've got to get it all working. Danny's doing a great job, you know, hospitality, catering as well, all helps the football club. Danny, we're going to say something? I was going to say, yeah, like the, the the attendances make a big difference because we've seen a huge uplift already in terms of the well, yeah, we had the kits on sale, but even though the kits have all sold, they're still still generating a lot more money than we ever used to on a match day in the previous regime. So it shows that the support 
you know, it does make a difference. And, and like you said, like Rob said, we'll continue to improve and and and, and take on board everything and uh, yeah, and and um, try and get as much in as possible. The third yeah, kit is coming down as well, isn't it? Yeah, the third kit's coming. Yeah. Well, so. do you know what? I might have asked you about the third kit because we <laughs> talked about this last time, and you would not, under pain of death, reveal what the third kit was like. Are you in a position to tell us what the third kit is like? Not yet. <laughs> Color? It's not red. It's not red. Okay. Not is it yellow? yellow? Is it yellow? <laughs> <laughs> it's coming soon, though. So I think I think people will be uh, yeah, excited by it. So it's, do you know when? Um, Have you got a date for it? Within the next well three three weeks, but before yeah, hopefully the end of this month. So um, we're just finalising it in with with Puma, and then obviously um, the sponsors printing things like that, and then yeah, as soon as it's ready, we'll. Uh, You'll be the first to know, Vic. I promise. Thank you. Uh, just in time for Father Christmas to deliver, I suppose. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This from Pete. Um, I'll get. Uh, oh, what about the poppy on the shirts? Because obviously, you know, clubs. Is, is there an EFL directive that you need to wear poppy on the shirts? What, what, what is the way that works? Uh, you, you have to. Well, you don't have to. Uh, previously, we've done armbands with them on. Um, the only reason is, is, is it's purely a, well. In the previous years, it's been a bit of a cost element, really, because you have to then print them on the shirts, and then that shirt is then you don't you can't wear that shirt again. So you've got mm. 20, 20 odd players times two shirts with the printing on everything, and then suddenly that that shirt can't be worn again. So, um, but yeah, previously we've done um, armbands with the uh, poppies on. Um, I'm not sure what the plan is this year. Rob might be better. But. Yeah, I mean, D D Dan's. You know, I think I think we're looking at it. I think our issue this year is you know less the cost side it's more about the number of shirts we've got because we know we've yeah. got a supply issue with the shirts and that doesn't just apply to the retail side it applies yeah. to the, the first team as well yeah. so we've got to be careful uh from that perspective because we know we can't get um additional shirts mm. from from puma for the and for that's the why also it's important that the players aren't necessarily being rude at the end of the games if not giving them away yeah, yeah. Mm. they're just they've only got a certain amount which sounds a bit funny for a professional football club but that's just the situation we're in where yeah, we've had to take some out of retail and for them to be able to uh, uh, to manage the first team element. So, um, so yeah, that's why. Yeah, if any anyone's got children that have said, "Oh no, he's promised me a shirt and he's never given it to me," then that's it's not because he's been rude. It's just because he <laughs> have a shirt. He, he's told not to. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Um, yeah. So, would, would the Crawley game, Rob? Would that be the one where you'd have the minutes? Like, how would that work if that is off? I mean, would you? when would you do it oh look we definitely definitely do the the if it if it was uh on then we definitely do the minute silence there you know we'll, we'll well, i'm sure we'll do it for the uh newport game as as well uh we're still trying to we're still pl trying to plan and work through the you know celebration of the armed forces as well mm. which yeah. probably be be separate so that we can have a special day where we celebrate and recognize the uh, the amazing work that the armed forces do you know both current and you know and um you know, veterans as uh, as, as well, um, and recognising the fact I said before. You know, we got twenty five percent of the army based in Wiltshire, got big air bases nearby. Obviously, you've got the training uh, piece in in Lynham and stuff. We've got you know a lot of the army and the air force nearby, and we want to you know try and recognise their contribution and have a bit of a celebration. But we're still working on planning that out with uh, with the armed forces. So that will that will come outside, and you know we will recognise you know our. You know our, our our fallen sort of hero, heroes. You know as many times as 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 we can. And I think yeah. just to add to that, I think Rob was you know um, like I said with that. I think the plan months ago was to aim for the Crawley game. I think um, for that with the armed forces and everything. But obviously with the potential you know international weekend of that, we didn't want to put all our eggs in one plan for that, and then everything's done, and then put everything in place, and then it gets cancelled. So um, so yeah, we've just had to sort of look a little bit further ahead for that but no fair enough and, and I, I just wanted to say at this point on saturday at oldham uh the observance of the minute silence was quite extra and uh, are you were there i think rob weren't you were you, yeah. I, were you there danny don't you no 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 uh, I, it was something that always is very very emotional so um 
well done to both sets of supporters. I think it was it's terrific. Uh, this is from uh, Pete. I previously bought a poppy STFC badge from Salvation Army in town. Uh, the store is not there anymore. Will the club be selling them? Well, I think we've heard that from tomorrow they will be available. Um, this is from Aaron. Danny, how on earth have we managed to get Wow Hydrate on board as a partner? Huge player right now in sports. Yeah. Um, again, speaking to, yeah, you know, ultimately I, I've spoke to many different people across all different industries and trying to get out there as much as possible. Um, and we want to try and uh, work with partners that, embody us as well in terms of helping us improve our professionalism on the pitch as well and also they've moved with our academy as well so um we work with that and our medical team our sports science team have also worked with them um previously as well so that was a really good in for me as well so um but yeah th there have been a great partner they support our academy um as well which is great for us for the for the team moving forward and also yeah the first team which has been which has been great so yeah that's just that's one of the you know a real good partner that we managed to get on board this year and, and shows the, the direction the club is traveling at the moment so great um uh, from andrew still davis uh you might know him uh, there is an access problem with youtube that we're working on plenty of content on i follow which is also free so there you are uh, that's from the horse's <laughs> mouth as it were so to speak um right so should we get onto a subject which uh many people uh sort of commenting on and i know many people are getting a bit frustrated from steve will the turnstiles in the trollop arcles be finally working from malcolm what what is being done to stop the horrendous cues as experience versus bradford in the arcle stand um yes now could you explain what the problem is because many of us have found there are cues and then your season ticket doesn't work what what is the problem um, I think, well, there's a couple of issues. I think, obviously, the well, one issue is the Arkle stand in general is that it is a, you know, it's got the same amount of capacity, even more capacity than the Don Rogers stand, but it's got half the turnstiles. So that makes it a little bit of a difficulty, almost a bit of a bottleneck in terms of the setup because you've got the cricket pitch next door to it. The Don Rogers, you've got various different areas. Um, so it, it makes it every time there's a busy game, you know, whether it be anything near to 10,000, it is busy. Uh, and that's, that's, that's just the matter of fact of that, um, which is one issue with it. And yeah, we have experienced some issues with the turnstiles. Um, I think the major issue initially has been about the, the, the season cards a little bit with the digital side and the, the plastics. So obviously we are, you know, as Rob said, we are, we were two, three weeks, four weeks behind. We put season tickets on sale two weeks before the start of the season. Mm -hmm. Normally, this is done in February. Everyone has their cards June, way before the start of the season, and any issues are, are, are rectified. Now, the I think one of the issues is that, obviously, we sent everyone digital cards initially because that's what we needed to do to get that out. Then there was emails of people. They didn't want the digital cards because they couldn't use them or download them, etc. And then, obviously... You know, maybe certain people have not got the first email with the digital tickets, asked about it. So we've sent them another ticket, but then they're using so how the system works. If, if for example, you forget your season ticket, Vic, I send you, I, I reprint your season ticket. Then the one I've sent you, the latest one will work. The, the first one won't work. So it stops someone from picking up your card that you've lost and using it for access. So I think a little bit of an issue of where, um, potentially people are, are not necessarily using the right, the latest one, which is no fault to a supporter. It's just the fact that maybe they've gotten their email because they're trying to find it and they've gone to the first email rather than the second one. But that's just because we're all a bit, we have been a bit rushed uh, through it and it's been difficult and we're trying to work through it as best we can with our access control system and ticket system to try and rectify issues. Um, but, you know, it, it's it's time something that takes a bit of time to do and um, but we're working on it but we we would urge just supporters i think to to get to get down to the ground as soon as possible and we're seeing that you know 20 past two there's hardly many people in the ground and and the flow rate which is the amount of people you should be able to get through a turnstile we should only, if the, everybody person every person in the town in the arkle stand turned up at half two we wouldn't be able to get everyone through just because of the amount of turnstiles. That's how it is. It, it needs to be 
people would at least be staggered across. So we, we'd appreciate if people could really get their, you know, allow a bit extra time. And actually, I feel like that would really, you know, from a football point of view, I feel like that would really help our home form as well by having people in the ground a bit earlier when the away team come and warm up, you know, uh, when they come out at 20 past, quarter past two, 20 past two, that there's a real good pe- amount of people in the ground. That really shows, I think, oh, do you know what? I don't fancy it today. You know, if they turn up in the stadium and there's not many people in there to start with, they might think, oh, it's quite nice, the pitch. It's, it's lovely and wide. I fancy it today. So I, I would ask, you know, we need to work through it. We know that um, and improve it, but we would urge supporters to try and help us a little bit and, and get to the ground, you know, not an hour and a half before, but just allow 10, 15 minutes extra and 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 see if we, that will help the problems a little bit. But like I said, we're, we are working through the issues and, and it is something that we're aware of and, and completely get it. Um, but it's it's kind of difficult mid-season with, with cards because if there was issues before, we could have sorted them way in advance of the season um but yeah yeah because uh, obviously you'd be aware that some people are, are not getting into games to 10 quarter of a, uh, 10 minutes 15 minutes after the game which you know obviously if you're trying to attack new su- attract new supporters that's not great is it and uh, you know you want more people to come clearly yeah. uh, but if they come and have to queue up and miss part of the game they're not going to be that happy are they so well, i think as danny says you know we, we're trying to work through the issues there's a number of them um we, we're getting the um the ticketing software company down to work with us. You know, I've had some feedback about the uh, how how things scan on your phone and how you put it through. And you know, Danny did a brilliant uh, video previously, which we might look to reissue to try and help with that. Um, we know, we, you know, there's probably a bit of an investment needed in the ticketing um, systems that we've got on the turnstiles. But again, that takes a bit of time. I think that the, the short term, the best thing is to try and get there early. It helps, as Danny says, the team. Helps us as well. People are in the stadium earlier and spending money inside the stadium rather than, shall we say, um, you know, anywhere else. And equally, the one other thing that, you know, I think happened at the last game is there was more um, searching as people went in, obviously, after the terrible mm. thing that happened to the, mm. um, the, the, the the Conservative MP out in um, in Essex. Um, um, so that was difficult. And we have got the possibility that, that COVID passports could come through. As, you know, we're going to face that when we, those that go to see the town at Newport in a couple of weeks. I was going to ask you about that very thing, actually, yeah. yes. Um, so we'll, we'll get an experience of that and we'll be issuing guidelines on that. Um, there is still talk that COVID uh, passports or, or proof of a, a negative lateral flow test uh, will come in, um, you know, in, in into England as well. Again, that that will put further pressure. So... The earlier that we can get people in the habit of coming to the games, the better it's going to be for a, for a, for a number of reasons. Uh, and it's not just, I would argue as well, it's not necessarily, it is an issue at Swindon, but it's been an issue across a lot of clubs in terms of the digitalization of things to be a bit quicker, that not everyone is as tech savvy, right, in terms of using things. So whether they're scanning it incorrectly or, or just loading it up on the phone, and, and we would urge you know fans to make sure the phones are out, that the got enough charge on their phone if they've got it on the digital you know little things like that which all just add up a little bit and add an extra few seconds and it all you know it all does um does add up um we've seen it even at i mean the first few games at liverpool right southampton in the premier league had had issues with it so it's it's something yeah we we need to work through 100 percent. but like i think uh like rob said it, it, if we could urge supporters just to allow another 10 15 minutes literally that will just get get that in and uh and and hopefully that will will start to alleviate some of the problems and we can obviously then um look at internally as well how we can improve it but it's something we're looking at 100 percent. okay um newport on the 20th of november then rob then uh i'm guessing we're going into wales so you will need either i think there's a covid letter which or uh um the download on your phone the the app won't you to get in yeah, yeah you will do yeah um and if you haven't got the uh you know the the the, the vaccine sort of passport you need to show evidence of a, of a lateral flow test within the previous whatever it is 24 or 48 hours and again normally on your phone we'll, we'll, we'll put clear um guidance on on the website as to what fans will need to do um i think there's also um some masks wearing that you might need to do inside the stadium as well um when you when you when we go to the game at, at Newport, but we'll put the guidance on there, um, you know. And we're few. I mean, there is we don't know when it might come into to England. There is talk. Uh, there was a meeting today of EFL clubs listening to the feedback to date from Swansea, Cardiff, and Newport as how it's gone to date um, with those clubs. And 
I think they've managed it quite well in terms of not really seeing any drop-off in attendance, uh, albeit there are additional costs for the clubs because there's probably more people needed to sort of check the passports and, uh, and you know, the, the negative tests, etc. Ipswich have been doing it as well. Um, they've decided to do it, um, if you like, you know, on a voluntary sort of uh, basis this season as well. So they've given some sort of feedback. So we've got an idea as to how it might work. Um, we'll just have to see, you know, the problem we've got is that we're told that the you know the most notice we'll get if the government do bring it in is seven days, which doesn't give us much time to no. to prepare for it. So we're we're trying to we're doing a little bit of planning now to see what we might do if it if it comes in. But the key thing will be for for those that that hopefully will sell out the away end at Newport. Um, I think we'll have around about a thousand. I think we were told today down as our, our allocation at Newport. Hopefully we'll sell that out and. But, but I will urge everybody to sort of review and make sure they've got all they need so that when they get to the uh, And get there in plenty of time because I assume yeah. there'll be checks, won't there? So, yeah, yeah. Will be. Uh, This is from Joe. Andrew Steele Davis is a quality guy. Give him time. I'll help for free if you want. I've volunteered for 12 years already. Uh, well done to you, Joe. Um, let's have a look. Social media. This is from Steve. Social media coverage has been excellent this season. Uh, from Martin, doing a great job, guys. Did I hear something that there was going to be a Christmas party for the whole club? I don't think he means the whole nine and a half thousand, does he? I think he means <laughs> maybe the staff, <laughs> which, you know, how you deserve. So if you do have one, have a great time. And I would say, Danny, um, I know it's a little while after now, but there were two home games last season. Um, and you lot must have been running around like goodness knows what to get that sorted out, those tickets mm. sorted out. So it's a bit belated, but thank you for what you did because you worked your socks off um, yeah. and more during that time. Yeah. That was a yeah, it was a difficult time of that. So um, yeah, thank you, much appreciated. Well, thank you because you got us into two games last season, which was a joy or not, as the case may be. <laughs> um, from Emma, will it be possible? We got loads of questions. We're not going to get them all in. So as usual, we'll forward them all to you. So I apologise in advance for not getting all these questions in. Um, these are from Emma. I think they're, let's do them both at the same time. Uh, will it be possible to have concerts at the end of the season to get more money in? And will the tannoy in the town then be sorted soon? It works for a while, then cuts out again. Um, if you're at Oldham in the away end on a Saturday, you may not complain about a tannoy again, quite frankly, because we couldn't hear a thing. So, um, but what about concerts? Because we've had them at the counter ground before, and yeah, you know, go back going back to the 1970s. I went to see Linda's farm there, and there were like two people and a dog, so it didn't really work. Yeah. No, it's, it is a difficult one. Um, and, and we've I've had some meetings already about potentially moving forward for concerts. Um, the only issue really is the current infrastructure of the stadium is not ideal, and if you're you know, if you're Little Mix, for example, and you've got options to choose as a concert venue, you've on that area you've got a lot other ones that are more set up. But that's something we've we've had some really positive meetings to put ourselves on the map in terms of being a venue for them, um, and that's something we're looking at um, to bring in, whether it be small scale to start with. Ultimately, it, these things, you know, they are expensive, and you don't necessarily uh, make a huge amount of money out of them. Um, by the time you've paid paid some of the uh, the acts to do, um, but yeah, there's something we're looking at doing, and 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 other things, even things like outdoor cinema on the pitch, you know, things like that that we're really looking to do next season. Um, hopefully, Marcus isn't listening, but you know, <laughs> uh, uh, we've we've got you know, I think with it with the end of the season, if we know you know, hopefully we're up, you know, don't worry about playoffs, you know, then we would have three three four weeks. Where, where before Marcus does his major reservation. So we've got some three weeks of time where we could do lot. We've got the opportunity to, to sell stuff on the pitch and do stuff. So we're, yeah, we're constantly looking at new options. And again, that's a great revenue stream for the club. And, and uh, yeah, we'd like to bring it back because I, I went to Brian Adams concert when it was there and Elton John was there and it was great to see. And actually from our point of view, that brings in people that wouldn't necessarily be at the ground ever. But I'm right in saying that wasn't a club thing, was it? There was a promoter who, yeah, that's how it works. The ground, the right. it, yeah. yeah, it's a promoter. They take over the venue. They pay you a fee to have it, you know. And so, might people think, "Oh, you've got thirty thousand people paying?" For, you know, no, it's not. The majority of that goes to the promoter, right? And you, you keep a small proportion. So, there's a lot of work that goes in, especially when we're not. It's not a, too bad if you've got the infrastructure already in place. But obviously, if at the club, if we had a concert, you'd have to hire in the sound system, the flooring, the everything, which all you know adds up. So, but. 100% looking at it and it's something we want to bring in and and, and yeah, it's, it's, it could be happening soon, hopefully. 
Uh, uh, Tannoy's, Rob, I know it's a bit of a bugbear, isn't it? I mean, I don't know where you're going to go with this, running around the room screaming, I would imagine, because <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, con- <laughs> yeah. it's been a constant, hasn't it, really? It has, and, and look, we've done a lot of work, actually, in terms of trying to make improvements, so it's it's good to know that there's some issues in the tan end as well. We've got, look, it's a very old Tannoy system, it needs investment uh, and improving, It's it's not been touched for many years, so we've... Um, Made some improvements, focusing the Don Rogers initially because that's where the feedback was. Um, all of the junction boxes on the top of the stand weren't properly covered, so they've been fixed now. We know that we've got some certain tannoys that aren't working that we need to replace. Some of them uh, need, I think, pitch side sort of cranes to get up to them, so they'll have to be done, um, you know, in the in the off season um, because obviously you can't get. Um, you know the a lift high enough without getting on the pitch which we can't do because it will cause damage to the pitch so there is some limitations as to what we can do but we are trying everything we can um we'll look at the tanning ones as well because most of the feedback has been on the dom rogers uh, but we are trying to to work and and make improvements and i've got a number of friends who i asked to give me some sort of feedback as to what is and what isn't working um around around the ground because then we can we can target and understand and sometimes when you when you check it the game before you know the game and there's no one in the stand it seems to all be working fine and then when the stadium's full and the different dynamics are happening you know they seem to not work um to the same degree so it's quite difficult then to to pinpoint it because we're all busy on a match day um and then sort of trying to understand where the real issue is can can be difficult but a lot of work's been gone on and will continue to go on to get the tanai system working better but again it comes back to years of sort of neglect and lack of investment really uh this shows is how from- far we've come Dick, though. shows how far we've come Dick, that now we're having a chat about tanoys and, and toilets <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I I I think so. I mean, but but the bottom is, but I was going to say the bottom line. That's not the right phrase to use in these extreme these circumstances. But you know, people, these are things that people actually it does matter to them because yeah. I always think if there's an emergency and you can't hear what's going, like at Oldham on Saturday, if they'd said you know there was something crazy going on, we wouldn't have known, quite frankly. Um, but it's a different it's, system, though, Vic. For yeah. uh, I know this now, there's a different system for uh, emergency announcements, and there yeah, are yeah, I get that, yeah. announcements, and and you have uh, and those are working fine. So don't everybody anybody get worried? We've had those tested from a safety perspective with the council and the uh, stadium guidance safety authority i always say it wrong dan and i can't remember what they're called now <laughs> you know what i mean um so that bit's working fine so don't people worry from that perspective uh from jonathan can mascots get the third kit and from joe will the third kit be limited in number lots of people missed out on the first shirt so would be nice for those to get priority if that's the case um you might remember that shirt that we wore at Cheltenham in the FA Cup debacle a few years ago it was limited and quite frankly thank goodness um so would it be a limited run in the shop or not yeah it'll be limited because we've only been able to order a limited amount um, um and, stop, no, Dan so I, yeah. I would hope everyone will have a chance and you know um, we might be able to get more of this one more easily than we can of the the the, the home and away one yeah. Um, that we, we, we can't get until until next summer. Uh, it's going to be a great kit. Yeah, and it's got a really? range of sizes as well, across a range of sizes, so it should, <laughs> we should be able to, to cater you're for te- all. You're teasing me now, aren't you? You're, I can tell. Um, some of the problems are people scanning the wrong side of the car. This is from Joe. I've seen this so often. Uh, from Tony, what happened at Sutton? Supporters were crammed into a corner and couldn't see the game. I, I Yeah, I was in... There was a little stand. I, I know this isn't your problem at Sutton, but just to make you aware, there was a, a little stand which was sort of angled onto the pitch where people had paid to sit in it. Yeah. And a lot of fans were sort of moved round from the terracing and were blocking their view. Um, I don't know. It's not your thing because it, obviously it was an away game, but there was a lot of dissatisfaction that people had paid to, to use the seats and a lot more than they yeah. would if they were standing up. And it did cause a bit of annoyance. But those sort of things we can always feed back, right? Yeah. So, you know, we, we yeah. can't, okay. like Forest Green, for example, you know, we, we can't do anything about that. That's not our stadium. We just administer tickets paid from that. But yeah, like I said, any feedback like that, obviously, I'm sure they're not, they're aware of the issues. But yeah, 100%, we can feed that back and, Good. and say, unfortunately, uh, yeah. we can't do too much about it after the fact. But 
Um, yeah, yeah, as you're all aware, there were forest green uh, problems at forest green as well, um, mm -hmm. with queuing and people not getting in and things. Uh, this is from Chris Can the stewards, when searching bags, etc., pull the people to one side so people can continue to keep moving or walk down the queue to do it? It is holding up people, maybe only a couple of seconds, but it all adds up. So I'll just send that comment to you. Whew, uh, loads and loads of them. I'm not going to get through all these. So uh, this is from Jason. Uh, Danny, could you start a monthly quiz night? Would provide funds for the club. Yeah, we, we constantly look at different revenue streams, 100%. Yeah, and, and I think the that's more in the uh, conferencing event side where Chris um, and Amy can look at those sort of things. But yeah, 100% look at theme night. You know, again, everything that can try and improve our our elements on a, on a non-match day because... Football's only every other Saturday, right? So there's a lot of other days where we can fill spaces. So, um, yeah, that's definitely something for, for Chris and Amy to look at 100%. From Daryl, why does the team wear the yellow kit when there is no colour clash? Now, it's, uh, it's not yellow, it's gold, says the other. So, um, uh, obviously, yellow is associated with another team who we won't mention. But um, there was a classic case on Saturday where I yeah, assume... Yeah, that a goalkeeper. <laughs> Yeah, well, the, the, exactly. The, the, the point is, I'm guessing that uh, because Swindon um, have uh, white shorts, Oldham have white shorts, so they couldn't wear white shorts. So then I assume they were playing in the away kit, which is gold and green. But then the goalkeeper had a yellow top on. It was bonkers. I, I mean, I don't understand that. But that's the, the point, isn't it? You can't have shorts the yeah. same colour as the opposition. Yeah, we had that uh, at Portsmouth, I remember, last year behind closed doors. And I remember watching on iPhone and everyone was saying, what, have the kit men got it wrong? Because we had, I think we had our blue socks on or the away socks with the home kit or something because um, Portsmouth had red socks. So, yeah, it was, a, <laughs> there's a lot of kit clashes, but we leave that one to Ray to uh, to manage. Yeah, and, and the goalkeeper did change in the second half, didn't he? He came out in a blue, I think, if I remember rightly, a light blue as opposed to a dark blue uh, that Oldham were wearing in the first half. Right, this is from Dave, Rob. So, um, it's a ticketing problem again. Two points. I hate moaning, especially about my our beloved club, and I'm fully aware that the club are doing their best after the shambolic, uh, shambolic conditions our previous owner left it in. I understand that there'll be a, a few teething problems. I'm sure the club will get there. Now, Dave the chair, I'm going to say, Rob, you'll know who Dave is. Um, the 0330-002-1993 number that we have to call for tickets, just to let you know that still nobody picks up. Or not very often. I'll be fair. We haven't phoned since the Colchester game, but it isn't just me. A lot of fans have been moaning about the non-pickup on Facebook in the last week. Buying disabled tickets online. Uh, the ticket office did email me before Northampton away regarding a meeting they had with ticketing on the 15th of September. In the email, I was promised feedback from the meeting. Didn't receive any. I recently bought my tickets for Oldham on the website with no problems. Uh, maybe it was too easy as there were no questions asked, so I could have been able-bodied and purchased a cheaper seat as carers don't pay. However, the fact that I uh, was able to obtain my tickets in the same manner that everybody else does or can was fantastic. Surely that is how it should be in 2021 for supporters with disabilities to feel inclusive. Plus, I also think that this could be a great inclusion for our club too. Uh, comments? Yeah, no, I, I would agree. You know, we want to try and make, you know, the county going, you know, the most accessible and inclusive uh, place to, to to go and go and watch your football and support your team. Really important thing for us to do. We know we've got more to do when it comes to answering the, the phone for more generally, but specifically on the ticket sort of side. Is that a staff issue, a lack yeah, of staff? It's, it's, it's staff. It's also the, the phone sort of systems that we're using. We're trying to sort of make improvements there. Uh, and make sure the routing is much sort of clearer and better. And there's, and there's a bit of staff, and we're looking to uh, add some additional staff that can be focused predominantly on on the phone. So I think at the moment the issue we've got is the sort of the shop and the phone, and therefore you know the, the, there's an issue there in terms of serving someone they they'll, they'll ignore the the phone, which you can understand. So we are looking at putting additional staff that can can man the phone lines uh, and not be distracted. Um, so areas we're looking to improve and we'll, we'll take the point on, on the website and making sure that, you know, disabled tickets can be bought there as best possible. Again, it might take us a bit of time to get it right, but we'll we'll take the feedback and we'll, we'll look to make improvements. Great. OK. Uh, from Tony, any chance of a big screen in the car park for England World Cup games? Of course, England playing, in, it'll be in December, won't it? I, I'm guessing 
in League One, which is where we'll be when the World Cup's on, obviously, um, we'll still be playing, won't we? Uh, the yeah, FL, is, they won't be uh, postponing games then, will they? No, I think we've had some consultation. I don't think it's been decided yet, but I think the suggestion was that the League One and League Two games would continue during the World Cup. Um, yeah, it's my understanding, but I don't think it's been decided. But that was, if you like, the the recommendation that clubs were asked there to get their feedback on. Oh gosh, uh, there's so many of them. So we'll, uh, there's one from Rich which says, "In um, came to his first. I've lost it now. There's so many, but um, he went to his first game against uh, Bradford City and thoroughly enjoyed the whole thing. I'm most impressed with my first home visit this season. So, you know, I think." <laughs> If I might say so, you're getting there. That's all I can say. And and I, I, we all appreciate how difficult these few months have been. And, you know, I think Dan Hunt actually um, came out with some statistics today about the amount of crowds that you're getting. And it, it's the biggest crowd you're getting since the early part of this century. So I think that is showing that people actually want to go to fo watch football in Swindon again, which, Danny, you know, from a commercial point of view, is fantastic, isn't it? Yeah, hundred percent. You know, and, and it all all goes into the pot. So, like you said, it, it's great to have it, and it and it. Well, it should help the team at home. It's been a little bit difficult at home, hasn't it? But you know, like I said, the the home support's been incredible, and we've been blown away by it, hundred percent. And and like it, that Rochdale, the last few minutes of that was incredible. When they got the equaliser in another five minutes, they would have won it. But it was, um, yeah, the atmosphere was incredible. So. Yeah, we urge people just to keep supporting and hopefully we'll, we'll get that home form going and, and uh, keep the faith because I think you can see the, the work that's going on on the pitch and, and, and how they're doing away from home. So hopefully we can turn that around at home. So Yeah, I, I, well, I think if we'd won a couple more of our home... I mean, this is bizarre league, wasn't it? Where we're top of the league for away form and bottom of the league yeah. for home form, which... <laughs> You know, I'm old enough to remember when it was the other way around. You know, you were supposed to win away at home and win a couple away, but the away form's fantastic for those of us who go, obviously. Um, now, just a, this is from Matt, and I don't know if you can clear this up or not. There are two points about this. Was Harry McCurdy's decision to delete his Twitter after less than a week a club decision, and will his suspension count in the FA Cup or the league? Rob, do you want to do that? Yeah, so the suspension counts, I think, in, in the Cup, as I understand it. Uh, I'm sure Ray Murphy, our club set, will correct me as, as needed, but I believe it it will count in the Cup. Um, and on the on the Twitter point, look, look, Harry is a, is a great character. Uh, you know, he, he's obviously something different, which is fantastic. It's great to have characters around the place. But I think we come to sort of a mutual decision that, that you know, it might be best that, that he take a, uh, a break from Twitter. But that was his call as much as it was ours. You know, sometimes you can get caught up in the moment a bit too much with Twitter and it's difficult to sort of, you know, manage stuff. And sometimes something you put on which you, you think is quite funny as a joke can be taken the wrong way. And I don't think there's ever been any malicious um, intent from his, his part. You know, he is a, he is a fun character. Uh, I think we, we love him for that and we want to try and hone that and support that because he's been doing a fantastic job for us um, on the pitch. But I think it's sort of a, a mutual decision for now. So... Um, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll still see that, that that amazing character shine through, uh, you know, on the pitch and and still see a bit of uh, fun from him off the pitch. Uh, just a couple uh, more. Andrew, oh. Andrew Davis will probably have a few uh, less grey hairs. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just a couple more because A, I, want, I know you want to go home, Rob, which is fair enough, <laughs> although I think you work there 24 hours a day. And Danny, I know you want to, you know, just relax. Why wouldn't you? Uh, just a couple more then. Um uh, from Stephen, will there be money available in January for new signings? I think Clem said when he was on this panel a couple of months ago that the club would review it in January and see about the EFL loan and whether they would pay it back if there was a need. Is that still the case? Yeah, it's still the case. So the embargo at the moment still stands and they'll re you'll review that when you yeah. get to January. Um, are Clem's lawyers still looking into the payments owed to Lee Power, allegedly? Is there something you can say about that? Yeah, well, look, we, you know, Clem's lawyers are are looking into that and dealing with it, and we're doing, you know, we're doing a bit of uh, of, dig, uh, of digging and reviewing historic situation and stuff like that. So, the work's ongoing in that space with some really good support from, um, you know, from su some supporters as well who uh, who are volunteering their their time and expertise, which is massively appreciated. Marvellous. Thank you very much indeed. And uh, just finally, finally, how are the club regarding opening the Stratton Bank? 
Hmm. Uh, the Stratton Bank. That must be, um, I don't know, a huge decision every week, whether you do or you don't. I mean, because it's this huge empty space, isn't it? And they, you're not going to open it for somebody like Crawley, are you? Let's be honest. No. No. Um, so uh, where where does that stand in terms of opening it up? So, so we, we, we're, we're looking really um, at what we need to do to make improvements to get it open again. The the trust of of very kindly said that they would be willing to to fund some work on the toilets, which need completely redoing because um, they're they're pretty much sort of gone the the old toilets at the at, at the back. Um, and also, we've got some turnstile issues as well that we'll need to we'll need to sort of fix and improve if we were to open it to, to home fans. Obviously. When it comes to you know away fans and you know hopefully we've got a couple of games coming up in the new year where we'll have a, enough away fans to warrant opening it and then we can bring in just by bringing in if you like temporary toilets and work for how we can how we can manage and get people in sort of safely then we will look to open it but there's quite a bit of work needs to be done the trust are, you know kind of said offered to help so probably something that will will take us a bit of time uh, before we can implement it equally you know you, you want to sort of put the new toilets in, but you don't want to put the new toilets in and then get get them smashed up uh, by uh, opposing fans, if that makes sense. So, no, 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 it's a fair way. You, you yeah. know, um, you have you have to time these things right as well. So we are, we are in discussions and plans, you know, the supporters trust, which is great, um, um, but but it might take us a, a bit of time. Hopefully we can get the county ground purchase done in the, in the new year. Uh, and that also allow us to sort of focus on, you know, putting a roof on it and and, and other things as well. Lovely, and it would be nice to get it open, I guess, for an FA Cup third round tie against the Premiership too. Right. <laughs> Do you remember the third round of the FA Cup? We were in it once, I think, weren't we? <laughs> uh, and talking of that, on uh, Saturday, uh, of course, we're away at Crew in the first round of the FA Cup. And just to say that SAS Travel will be open tomorrow night in their office at the back of the town end, uh, if you want to book on that. They've got enough bookings. They're full up on the first coach, uh, but they haven't got enough yet for a second. They've got a reserve list, but if you want to book, then uh, go on to the um, Supporters Club website. You'll find all the details for SAS and uh, they will be able to get you to crew as they do every week and they do a fantastic job. Uh, this from Stu. Thank you all. What a great insight. So, gentlemen, thank you very much. Um, really appreciate your time. And it's vital, of course, that we have these every so often because it gives an insight to what's going on at the club. So really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rob and Danny. And I've got the most important question that, di that um, Vic didn't ask. It's for <gasps> Neil. Danny, where do you get your beard shaped? <laughs> I don't think he'll be able to sleep tonight if he doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> guys, guys in Old Town, uh, in, uh, opposite, uh, opposite near the ground. Big, big Sweden fan as well. There you go, see? So hopefully that answers your question, Neil, for that. So. And will you be sitting in for Johnny Williams when yeah. he's on international Johnny duty? Williams has already been there for it as well. So, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's been, uh, it's been wonderful. As we anticipated, we've had hundreds of questions, so um, I'll collate them and send them over to you guys and you can uh, answer them when you can. So thank you very much, everybody. That's all for tonight. Um, next Monday is an On the Sofa with Jamie Sendos white So that's a later start at half seven. So don't panic at seven o'clock if we're not here. Oh, I'm glad you told me. <laughs> <laughs> <Very good. laughs> I would have told you beforehand, don't worry. Thank you. Yeah. So it's a half seven start for that, so um, just a bit later. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in tonight. As um, we've had the questions on there, it's a wonderful insight into what's going on. So that's fantastic. So that's all for us, and we will see you next week. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Peace, guys.